Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I have another video about Capture One Express for Fuji shooters. So in this video what I want to talk about is my approach to sharpening Fuji files when using Capture One Express. Now these tips will actually work for Capture One Pro as well, however there are some more uh, tools in Capture One Pro that will affect things as well, but this advice works for both Capture One Pro and Capture One Express. So. If you are shooting with a Fuji camera and you're working with Capture One Express and you want to optimize the sharpening for your Fuji files, this is what I do. So just to bear in mind that some of this advice is kind of my personal preference and you may approach things differently yourself. But if you're looking for somewhere to start, then have a look at the tips I'm going to present to you and uh, see if you like it and see if it works for you. As always, the best thing to do is to try this out yourself and see if this works on your own images and if you're happy with this. And if you do, um, you can then use this as an approach going forward. Okay, so I have an image here and just to uh, work on, just so I can show you some of the things that I'm trying to talk about. Now, one of the problems is because I'm doing this uh, as a video on YouTube and the YouTube compression is going to make this difficult to see some of these things in the video. So again, that's why I suggest you follow along on your own images, but I will zoom in a little bit extra just so that you can see what's going on. Okay. So in Capture One Express, the main areas that you should be concerned with, with regards to sharpening are in the detail panel. So uh, it's the little uh, magnifying glass. And what we're concerned mostly with is sharpening and noise reduction. Okay, so the defaults for Fuji um, images are, in my personal preference, are a little overly processed. Now, you may be perfectly fine with these, and if that's the case, then this video is probably pointless. <laughs> but if you think that as well, that they are a little overly processed and you want to get better results, then this is what I suggest you do. So the very first thing you need to do when adjusting sharpness in Capture One is to zoom in to one to one. So if you're on the hand tool, all you have to do is double click on the image. Okay, so I am here now at one to one. Now, for the purposes of this video, as I said, I'm actually going to zoom into 200%, but this is mainly so that you can see it on YouTube, um, but I don't recommend you do this. You shouldn't need to zoom in past 100% to see what you're doing. Uh, viewing at 100%, will let you see the sharpening results properly because when you scale down, there's additional anti-aliasing going on and Capture One does a few things with its previews. That means you're not getting to see it completely accurately. So that's why I always recommend that you zoom into one-to-one -one because otherwise you're going to over sharpen your image because you're compensating for additional softness of the display that won't be there when you export the image. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna zoom into 200% here just for the purposes of showing you this on YouTube. So we have a bit of a detailed section here, and here we have some uh, less detailed, and this is actually important, um, and the reason I'm using this image is because it highlights two of the issues. Okay, so the first thing that I do, um, and this is kind of how I approach sharpening for all images, regardless of whether it's Fuji or otherwise. So in the sharpening panel, what I do is turn the threshold to zero. Now, this will, change depending on your ISO of your image. So if you're using a very high ISO image, then you will probably need to bring the threshold back up. But what I always do is lower it to zero because the threshold is like a cutoff um, and it, it, it tells how fine a detail you want to sharpen. So the default of one uh, will actually leave out some details. Um, in many cases, you may not notice it, but in, it adds a certain level of crispness, especially at low ISO images. So if you are shooting at 200 or 400, um, lowering this will actually bring a little bit more crispness to your image. Uh, at higher ISOs, it may begin to sharpen the grain in the image as well. So it's up to you to decide which you prefer. But as I said, I recommend setting it to zero. And then you can always bring it back up to see to the points where you think it's actually making a difference. So the second thing is the noise reduction um, luminance is set to 50. So at lower ISO images, you don't need any luminance noise reduction. So I'm gonna turn this right down. Okay, and straight away you can see here on this detail, I'm bringing back some details of the mesh that was being softened by the noise reduction. So if I just undo that, 
Now you may not be able to see this in the video as I said, but all along here, this area of the detail of, of the mesh of um, the bridal gown here has been completely softened and is gone. Um, but when I bring this down, it comes back. And as you can see, the detail is perfect. There's no artifacts like you would get in uh, Lightroom. Now, in previous versions of Capture One, I also recommended turning the details down because I found that the details slider actually aggravated um, some of the small amount of artifacts that you were getting, but they've improved this a great deal. So this is no longer necessary. Um, point of the detail slider is to compensate for softening in the luminance noise reduction slider. So if I have this up at 50 where it was, and then the detail slider is supposed to kind of compensate for the softness about it. And that's like, for example, if you turn it right down, you can see that's much softer again. However, I just leave it at default now. Um, so basically my settings for most ISO images in the lower end of the scale, so say between 200 and 800, is to drop the noise reduction luminance slider right down and drop the threshold right down. And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. You can then save these as a style if you want to. In the full version of Capture One, you can actually set these as defaults if you want to as well. And that way they will be applied to images every time you import them. Unfortunately, you can't do that in the Express version. Okay, so one last thing. Um, if you are working with a high ISO image, so here we have one shot at 6400, so I'm gonna zoom right into this. And again, I am going to zoom to 200%. In this case, generally the defaults are probably fine. Um, you do want to have a bit of noise reduction on and 50 is actually not bad. The noise reduction algorithm in Capture One is actually pretty good. Again, you can decide to lower the threshold and this will then sharpen everything. Um, one of the things I find with the threshold and the reason that it lowers so much, and this is kind of a geeky thing, um, is that it is a hard cutoff. There's no there's no fall off on it. So it's like you get, uh, you can get a degree of artifacting with it sometimes in certain images and it kind of looks almost like a digital camera um, because it's a hard cutoff. Whereas other softwares like Lightroom, for example, uses a soft cutoff. So it's, it's as if you blurred the threshold. Um, so instead of going from sharp to off, sharpened to not sharpened, you go sharpened, less sharpened, less sharpened, less sharpened, and then not sharpened, if you know what I mean. But in Capture One, it's a hard cutoff, so it's literally sharp or not sharp. And sometimes you can actually see that and it makes a difference to your image. But again, this is kind of really getting into the weeds here. So in most cases, you don't even need to worry about that. And uh, if you are seeing an issue with grain being sharpened, you can just bring the threshold back up slightly. And then see, even with the luminous noise reduction turned down at 6400, it's still a really good quality image because it's doing that good a job in the first place. And also your Fuji files aren't actually that noisy. Okay, so that is pretty much it. So to summarize, uh, in most images, um, in most normal ISO range, so what I would consider normal ISO range would be 200 to 800, uh, maybe even 1200. I suggest turning the threshold to zero and turning the luminance noise reduction down. And that's pretty much the basics of it. Now there's a lot more kind of complicated things you can get into by changing the radius. You can actually change the structure of the sharpness in the image. And that's kind of, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty geeky kind of things to deal with, with sharpening. So I'm not going to get into any of that. Uh, I will do a follow up video at some stage for Capture One Pro and detailing the sharpening options in that. And in that, I will go into more details because there is a structure slider in that that can also um, add details as well. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this quick video useful. So if you have, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button so you get notified of new videos. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.